Prenuptial Postnuptial Agreements and Palimony Chapter 1 Protect Your Money in Case of Divorce Prenuptial Agreement Marriage contracts could be a little bit different from prenuptial agreements because both sides will participate in putting it together and it usually involves a personal way life is lived day by day not necessary the hardcore legal aspects. In Canada, a prenup is called a marriage contract. Basically, a premarital agreement is a contract between two people that defines the rights and benefits that will exist during the marriage and afterwards if there is a divorce. It usually limits the spouse's right to property and other benefits in the event of death or divorce. There is a federal uniform premarital agreement act but every state has its own laws. If you are requesting the prenup, talk to your attorney to learn the specifics. Once you got it down on paper, tell your fiancé in a loving, honest, and tactful, sensitive way that you love her but you've been through hell before and if she loves you, She'll understand that love is not about material things therefore she should sign it to prove she's in love with you not your money. Put the burden on her. Make her feel guilty, like she could be marrying you for impure reasons. If she refuses to sign, she has called your bluff. Either forget about her or swallow your pride and tear it up in front of her if she's worth it to you. Suggest that she have a similar agreement drawn up to protect her assets then assure her that you love her and want to forget about the agreement. With a prenup, often one will draft one up and ask the other to sign or each will make up their own. Beware of coercion in signing the prenup. If the guy making up a prenup makes it too unfair, the judge, S, will reject it during divorce proceedings and give the other person a better share. The prenup is geared to stop the gold digger short. The longer the couple are married and the more children they have together, the more void the agreement is. One lawyer said not one of her clients who refused to sign was rejected by her suitor. They all got married. If you plan to have a prenup, don't wait until the wedding day. Give it to your bride at least a month before so she can look it over. Marriage contracts are often a trivial way to try to legislate a good marriage. Some marriage contracts call for four hugs a day, one hot cooked meal a night, two babies in four years, etc. While a prenuptial agreement is different, based almost exclusively on two things. 1. What assets do I own that I want exempt from sharing in the event of a divorce, usually home, business, stocks, pension, etc. 2. What is it about the state slash provinces laws about distribution that I don't like such that I will create my own plan now, get it in writing and signed in a legally binding contract? Other less urgent items in a prenuptial agreement are terms of support, based on length of the marriage, and child support. Child custody can't be decided in advance. Circumstances change, especially with the attitude of kids, which is why prenuptial agreements are tentative at best. About 5% of first marriages and 20% of second marriages have the prenuptial agreement also known as an antenuptial agreement. The prenuptial agreement is basically a contract made between the man and women before the marriage ceremony usually about who owns what and the disbursement of assets in the event of breakup that each agree to and sign in the presence of witnesses to make it legally binding. If one or both people own a large number of assets such as with second marriages, a prenuptial agreement might be a good idea to avoid possible hassles later on. Prenuptial agreements take the spice out of romance but they're necessary if one has significant assets and the other doesn't. If both have almost nothing but your personal property, don't waste your time. If each has acquired a home, car, some savings, etc., it might be worthwhile just to say that each will take away what you brought in and split the rest should you split up. The legal and financial obligations between spouses regardless of gender are obligations of mutual respect, fidelity, and support meaning you have to help each other financially and this is the way the law looks at spousal support in the divorce regardless of gender which is why you sometimes see wives paying their husbands alimony but beyond this, the only way to limit it if you're rich is to get an airtight proper prenuptial agreement that's been scrutinized on both sides by separate lawyers. Pot are covered by the Federal Uniform Prenuptial Agreement Act slash UPAA. State laws may differ slightly but they're all based on the UPAA. 
The purpose of a PA is to bypass state laws regarding the disbursement of assets in case of a divorce so use it that way and make it foolproof legally by following all the rules. In order to make the PA as valid as possible, have each side get their own lawyer to check it out then both sign. If you don't do this, if there ever comes a day when the PA should be enforced, the judge can render it null because if your wife didn't have a lawyer at the time of signing, the judge can easily think she's just an ordinary not so business savvy girl who signed what her future husband wanted her to sign out of sheer naivete or coercion, him threatening not to go through with the marriage unless she signed. Full disclosure of all assets and liabilities is a must in order for the PA to be veiled. The PA must be entered into freely without coercion and the terms must be fair. In other words, the one with the money must make a fair offer to the spouse for her time to be fair as the wife, serving her husband in some way, even if it's as frivolous as being his escort for social functions. Pa can easily be thrown out of court if they're not fair or agreed upon freely so make sure each side has their own lawyer and be fair in the terms of a settlement should you two break up. Make it in ample time before the wedding like at least six months because the closer to the wedding it's signed, the more it will seem like coercion. Things that Pa can't cover are Child custody Illegal acts Sexual obligations Conditions to leave the spouse destitute or a ward of the state Some tricky points that a PA could alleviate is a clause stating that when you die, your children inherit everything not your spouse as the law states in many states, that the spouse is automatically entitled to a portion of your estate regardless of what the will says. Anything you own before the marriage, specify this and the fact that it's yours exclusively by calling it separate property. The other sticky point is the spouse's responsibility for the partner's debts. Credit card companies and other loan agencies often put in fine print that the spouse is responsible for the person's debt should they be unable to pay so put into the PA that you will not be legally responsible for your spouse's individual debts or a bankruptcy should he ever file for one. If you want to change the PA after marriage, follow the same procedure and have each side agree to it with their own lawyers. This is called a post-nuptial agreement. If you move from one state to another, check with your lawyer to see if you should draft up a new PA. In essence, a good PA now that will cost anywhere from a few hundred dollars to a few thousand could save you a lot of money down the road in the event of a divorce. Generally, older established people, business owners, couples who each want it, couples where the wife will give up her career to stay home, Unlikely couples like the old man and the young woman, whirlwind romances, couples where one has cheated before should all consider prenuptial agreements. Virtually all prenuptial agreements will cause some resentment in the one with the least amount of assets because she feels it's a violation of the implicit trust the new husband should have in his future wife but I say if you're worth something, screw the romance, save your ass, get that PA signed or better still, don't get married, just live together. After it's signed, be aware of any hidden anger the one without the money has towards you for making her sign. If it gets too bad, either leave or tear up the agreement to show her you really love her. Better still, just tear up a photocopy of the agreement and keep the real one in case you ever need it. If she's really angry for making you sign, maybe she's not worth it in the first place. Even if you don't have a PA, you should do the steps behind them as a matter of course like. Get what you both bring into the relationship on paper. Make a joint financial plan for the immediate future. Decide what each would leave with in the event of a divorce. Make up a will. Put a provision in that releases you from the burden of caring for the other in case of serious illness or accident including nursing home bills which would then put the responsibility on the state government. The bottom line is to try to make a fair deal which both sides are comfortable with. Write out how you would handle Real estate Furniture Insurance beneficiary Debts Promises Credit cards Cars Financial aid to parents and children Religious practices The assets each person brings into the marriage The assets acquired during the marriage Dramatic increases in one person's wages during the marriage Compensation for the wife for becoming a housewife, sacrificing her career. 
retirement savings plans, health, and dental insurance. Bad credit and debts before marriage, would you help her pay it off? Would you help your spouse with child support from other marriages? In case of divorce, how much support will be paid, for how long and how will property be allocated? Distribution of both personal and business assets. Inheritance information. Insurance information. Personal property. Business property. Spousal support, alimony. Provisions for future alimony and child support. Adoption of children. Agreements as to duties in the marriage. Dispute resolution in the event of divorce. Virtually anything the couple agrees to. Prenuptial agreements generally keep things simple in the event of a divorce later on, that's their big advantage but if the marriage lasts five or more years, you should get updated prenuptial agreements to keep them current because a judge might not honor a prenuptial agreement more than five years old since the dynamics have probably changed like there are probably children in the equation now and different salaries. Prenuptial agreements are not romantic but they do the job to protect your assets in this era of high divorce rates and save the hassle of a messy divorce later on. The best, simplest formula is each keep what they brought in and split what was acquired during the marriage 50 to 50. If you own a business, definitely get a prenuptial agreement to protect it in case the marriage fails. If a wife helps a guy through college while she works, you should get a prenuptial agreement getting some kind of protection that he will pay you back one way or another. You can put anything you want in a prenuptial agreement. What conditions will change the agreement? Length of time married. Addition of each new child. Tax, estate, or marital law changes. You can either write up a simple agreement yourself, get a prenuptial kit, nalo.com, get a marriage lawyer or a paralegal to draft one up for you. You can amend or nullify the PA anytime both of you want to. Prenuptial agreements can be contested and generally, the longer the couple are married, the weaker the agreement. Prenuptial agreements are sometimes overturned especially if there are children involved, the marriage lasts more than five years, things changed dramatically during the marriage like the husband started making a lot more money and simply if the wife takes it to court and asks for more money than the ex-husband would like to give her. Wealthy women are now getting prenuptial agreements to protect their assets. If you intend to get a prenuptial agreement, the more formal it is, the more authentic it will seem to the court considering it at a later time so either get a lawyer to do it or type up the agreement and get it signed by witnesses who are all corroborated by a notary public. If each side gets a lawyer and they both hammer it out, it will be a lot more authentic than if the husband pulls out an agreement with his lawyer and wants the wife to sign without her own lawyer checking it out. Prenuptial agreements are successfully contested when the conditions change after marriage. For example, if you get married with a prenuptial agreement and you're worth $100,000 but 10 years later when you divorce, you're worth $2 million, the court will tend to think that the assets gained during the marriage should be dispersed equitably. Many prenuptial agreements are not 100% upheld in court. The judge takes all factors into consideration when making his decisions. Prenuptial agreements may give off the impression that they kill romance but they are necessary in a community property state when one spouse is quite wealthy and the other not so. Before you sign the prenuptial agreement, have each party take an inventory of their assets and liabilities and include it with the agreement. Familiarize yourself with your particular state laws regarding divorce. Think twice before you put anything into joint ownership like the house. Update your wills frequently. Consolidate or coordinate medical insurance and change beneficiaries in your insurance policies. If you were married before, make up a will or a trust to leave some money to children from the earlier marriage in case something happens. Without this agreement, you're giving state law and ultimately a judge the power to determine the allocation of your assets in the event of divorce so if you have lots of money, consider getting it done. In the final analysis, don't get too nitpicky in a prenuptial agreement otherwise you might alienate your spouse. Do it in plenty of time before the wedding date to give it time to wear off. Postnuptial agreement. There are such things as postnuptial agreements done in community property states where one party, usually the husband, 
makes a lot of money during the marriage and makes up a contract that he wants his wife to sign like a prenuptial agreement after marriage. There's no romance there but some people, especially those who have gone through a divorce, are doing this. There are other reasons for it beyond just protecting money. One guy wanted to curb his wife's spending habits so he made up a postnuptial agreement to limit her to a budget. They are not supposed to be made up in anticipation of a divorce but to help smooth over a rough spot so both sides are clear. They seem to be the first step in many divorces. Sunset Clause Some people use a sunset clause in their prenuptial agreement which renders it null and void in the event of some condition like the birth of a son or after five years of marriage or something like that. Palimony, Common Law Divorce Obligation Palimony is one side, usually the husband, either agreeing to pay alimony to his ex-common law wife or being forced by the court to do so. In order to win, the girl has to prove that he promised to support her. Palimony is alimony for an unmarried couple after a split. If two people live together then split and one decides to sue the other for financial support, it's often for either or both of two reasons. She was with him for a long time, supported him in his career development now deserves something. He made a promise to her, usually verbal, that he would take her of her for life no matter what. The two sides go to civil court and hash it out. The judge or judge and jury makes a decision and that's it. The one seeking support must file the suit through civil court. Palimony laws vary state by state. Protect yourself by living independently while you live with him such that if he leaves, it's not like you're overly dependent on him. In order to counteract a misunderstanding, make up a cohabitation agreement. Nalo.com, Book Living Together, A Legal Guide for Unmarried Couples. Palimony.com Nuptial Agreement Websites. OneStopLegal.com, Download Postnuptial Agreement. AmericanBar.org slash Gen Practice. Anabrace.com slash Prenuptial and Post Nuptial Agreement. AZSDRNet.com slash All Headlines slash 114638. Bankrate.com slash BRM slash New slash Advice slash 2002102121. ASPBrewelaw.com slash Prenuptial underscore Agreement. HTM. Businesschambers.com. Divorce-lawyer-source.com slash new slash postnuptial hyphen agreement. Divorcenet.com slash states. Divorcenet.com slash state slash new underscore jersey slash 10 underscore questions. Divorcesource.com slash new york slash article slash no wack 4html New York. Equalityinmarriage.org slash dm post.html. Equalityinmarriage.org slash demowandwy.html Jlaw.com slash form slash postnuptial.html, Jewish Law Kohtzlaw.com slash prenuptial.jsp, New York Law.freeadvice.com Legalmatch.com slash law hyphen library slash article slash postnuptial Legalranks.com Mediate.com slash article slash Larson trip PE dot CFM. Postgazette.com slash PG slash 06029 slash 645049 STM. Postnuptial agreement can adjudicate the disputes within a marriage. Pro legal forms.com. RBS2.com slash dcontract.pdf. Prenuptial and postnuptial contract law in the USA. ScottLawFirm.com slash agreement.htm TheLawEncyclopedia.com VimlaNowLaCSQ.com slash before underscore during dot htm VimlaNowLaCSQ.com slash pre underscore post underscore new p dot htm WebPages.Charter.net slash j2005 slash don slash postnuptial dot html wf-lawyers.net slash client underscore testimonials dot shtml wife.org slash money underscore family underscore pre and you porno tp renup dot htm wtp nebraska.com post nuptial agreement we the people legal document services